Right Honorable Speaker, the statement relates to uh, our position as the opposition on the directives of the President on awarding contracts on uh, especially roads and health facilities across the country to individuals and the UPDF. Right Honorable, because this issue is becoming dicey and is raising concerns across government departments and the private sector, right on the speaker. I'll, I've asked my uh, shadow minister for works to make uh, read the statement on behalf of the, of the opposition. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, right on our speaker. Honorable members, uh, in the interest of time, I'll just make a brief statement that has been applauded, so I'm sure you have uh, time to look at it. Uh, right on our speaker, uh, we are <coughs> deeply concerned uh, specifically about the involvement of the President of the Republic of Uganda in matters to do with awarding contracts. Uh, this practice is not only irregular, but illegal. Uh, in the first place, the president is initiating uh, procurement needs, informally meeting service providers at state house, and uh, issuing directives commanding government agencies, uh, ministries, departments, to enter into formal agreements with those service providers based on his whims and wishes. Uh, whereas the president, as the fountain of honor, enjoys executive authority under the Constitution, must be exercised judiciously and within the confines of the law. Uh, right Honorable Speaker, what is happening the presidential directives do uh, contravene established law. Uh, of recent, right on our speaker, the president has actually issued out clause to uh, five directives and other general arbitrary directives. Uh, we have a letter dated 15th May 2021 where the president directed Uganda National Roads Authority, UNRWA, to enter into an agreement with the Chinese company Zongmei Engineering Group on a pre-financing arrangement for the construction of Kanoni Misinji Mitiana Road. We also have another letter dated 21st June 2021, where the president directed again UNRWA to enter into an agreement with SICO on again another pre-financing agreement. There's another letter dated 21st June 2021 for the Pakwachi Bridge uh, and, and another also dated 29 uh, July 2021. Uh, there's also a general letter in the month of August 2021 where the president wrote again directing the executive di director of UNRWA to award a company to three, sorry, to award contract to three Chinese entities. Uh, what is surprising, you are only looking at Chinese companies and the president giving directions or directives to do with the pre-financing. Madam Speaker, on 1st July 2021, the president directed the Minister of Education and Sports and the Ministry of Health that beginning the financial year 2021-22, all contracts or projects for the construction of schools and health centers should be given to UPDF Construction, construction Brigade. Uh, in a nutshell, this really it's not only arbitrary, but abuse of office. And we believe, with all due respect, 
the president has no mandate under his docket to do whatever he's doing. This is very dangerous for this country and for this house to just look on when the fountain of honor is abusing and uh, breaching established laws. That's why we stand here, Honorable Speaker, to, to seek not only your indulgence, but the active participation of this house to stop this kind of conduct. It's unpalatable, it's illegal, procedurally wrong, and improper. Uh, <coughs> why? Right on our speaker, I will summarize here. He's not only circumventing uh, procurement laws, but he's giving advantage to a specific country or companies hailing from a specific country, which must be interrogated. Uh, when you look at the PPD Act, Section 79, procurement methods and requirements are specified. And specifically, part four, which I will highlight in the interest of time, uh, there must be open bidding. You should not just go to set house. There must be open bidding. It must also follow international uh, bidding requirements. It must also be domesticated, and you look at domestic bidding requirements. So the quotation direct procurement, everything must go through a process. Uh, it must not be uh, discrimination. Di dis discrimination. There must be no discrimination. It must be transparency. There must be accountability and fairness uh, and other requirements. This is lacking in the process if you just go and meet the president uh, at the st at State House. Uh, with regard to UPDF Engineering Brigade uh, for the construction of schools, we take uh, exception to this kind of conduct. UPDF as a unit should really go for open bidding like any other units. So the letter to the Minister of Health and, uh, and, uh, and the Minister of Education directing that those agencies should really uh, on a contract with, uh, with, with this UPDF. Again, uh, can, you, can you summarize? I'm summarizing. It contravenes the law. Uh, then, the most important point for us to consider as a house this pre financing uh, arrangement, these are loans. You see, you cannot guarantee or give out a loan as a president. It must be cleared by this house, which is not the case. So it's <coughs> maybe just a, con a correction on that. There is no loan that, is, that has ever been given out by the president. It is this house that approves the loans. It just a correction on that. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. But we are talking about pre-financing arrangements where you, yeah, you give a directive that a second company should really uh, enter into a contract without advance payment. So we have a lot of unconstitutional issues where we are uncomfortable. And, uh, and I therefore pray that the ministries uh, concerned where those directives are given, specifically of works and health and other agencies, should shun or stop taking those directives as if uh, they are mandated, mandated under the law, and that this House should really move to advise His Excellency the President to stop that arbitrary conduct. I beg to submit. Thank you so much. Uh, we are not debating on that. Uh, Lob, I thought you are delegated. No, just to clarify, right honourable, the fact that the statement is made and we shall require a response to the House by the Ministry is concerned. One, on the issue of uh, pre-financing. Right honourable Speaker, with due respect, pre-financing is indirect borrowing and without parliamentary approval. Because pre-financing has a lien 
It's a public debt to be paid at a future date. And under the PFMA, it's a form of borrowing to which we like the Minister of Finance to come and explain whether it is privy to the arrangement under pre-financing and its implications to the attendant laws of the land, right on the speaker, including situations where we have directives uh, by the president to ministries to offer contracts to particular entities, the constitutionality of these directives, so that this House can debate them. We are raising a red flag, right on the speaker. Because the World Bank itself has raised a red flag on some of the contractual arrangements to which it's even threatening to cancel funding, right on the speaker. We ask that uh, you direct the concerned ministries or ministers to come and offer a plausible and equivocal statement to the House for a, a dual debate by both sides of the House. Right on the Thank speaker. you. Uh, we will need a response from the Attorney General to this effect on the issue of the Presidential Directive. But also, I want you to be aware that when a President gives directives, it's not express. It's upon you, the technical people, to make sure that you do the right thing.